All right, the time is uh, 28 minutes after 7 o'clock. That one coming through from King D, uh, Denga Music, uh, you know, saying, hold on, Farrera, uh, you know, uh, hope is coming. And so that's how we get to, uh, to the bottom of the hour this week and wrap it up for the top five trending tracks uh, for this week. And so we have our special guest in the studio today. Uh, his name is Gen, sort of Africa. We're going to tell him, to ask him where this comes from, you know, and I know him as uh, Sibongi <laughs> Sen, and now he comes out as uh, Gen, sort of Africa. So we're going to get uh, to know a bit more about that. But before we do uh, start uh, with our conversation with our special guest uh, for this morning, we're going to uh, hear his beautiful, beautiful, uh, you know, um, debut single, in fact, and so um, Dali Wom Thaba, you know, which came out, uh, how many weeks? About three weeks ago. Uh, you know, of course, uh, Distro uh, being the distributor there uh, online, and so we're going to be enjoying uh, the one from Games of Africa, um, Dali Wom Thaba. Be blessed. All right, the time is uh, 7.33 on Kofifi FM, 97.2. Uh, this is uh, the Rhythm of Praise that you're listening to uh, with myself, Ronnie L. Duka Duka Labarawudze, indeed. So thank you very much for being with us since the crack of dawn uh, this morning at 6 o'clock. And uh, we are now, you know, uh, uh, geared to speak to our guest uh, for this morning. His name is Gain, sort of Africa. And uh, he's released a brand new single, um, Dad Won't Club, three weeks ago, and it's doing quite well. Uh, so let's welcome him to the studio. Good morning. 
Good morning, Ronnie L and all the listeners that are tuned into Coffee Fee FM. Thank you for having me. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well on this bright and rainy morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's a blessed one just before my birthday, so it makes oh, sense. Oh, really? When's yeah, your birthday? Tomorrow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Happy birthday in advance. So, 8th of April, that's your birthday. Yes. No, God bless you indeed uh, for that. And Thank you. Uh, hopefully, you know, uh, part of your journey and uh, this new single and your journey music will, uh, will be blessed as part uh, you know, of, of what you're doing. Uh, Again, to North Africa, please tell us more about uh, yourself. I am a young person who loves God so much mm -hmm. and a musician that has been a worshipper for the longest time. Yeah. Uh, always been scared of recording, but finally been pushed to say, let's do this and I adhered to the core. Yeah. But I love God so much. I'm a, um, I'm a worshipper at heart. I write music. Um, above everything else, I think for me, uh, being a Christian is the best thing for me, hence yeah. I'm doing gospel. Um, and I can say a lot of things about myself, but I, I, I I'll just sum it up and just say I'm a young person that loves God and that, that has seen God's hand and grace yeah. in his life. I think I'm where I am coming from, where I'm coming from, um, which is Gatao. I was born in Mandela in a squad yeah. camp. Yeah. I grew up there. Um, I've seen the hand of God up until today. That's really mm. who I am. That's, that's good to know. And we'll, we'll, uh, we'll unpack more about you know, your upbringing and how that's inspired you, fueled you yes. uh, to do a lot of things that you're doing now. Um, so this song, Umdalo Umtlava, it's your first single, I, I believe, right? And yes. So uh, what brings it about? How did you get to decide this is the song that needs to go out now? Yo, <laughs> that's a difficult one because <laughs> my team had to also <laughs> assist me. Because, you know, when you're an, a new um, artist or an upcoming artist, yeah. you, you are learning so much. Only if you're open to it. And I was. Um, I had an amazing team. Uh, um, Sinis Squad, to my music director as well as mm. Silo Ramatwi, who's my producer. Um, we we came with the song. I gave them the song. It made sense to them because to me it didn't make sense. Um, but then we started working with the song. Um, two years later, then we are releasing the song uh, because I felt mm. maybe it's not the time. But also, I don't feel the the song is ready yet. Yeah. But the song came about when I was in Eastern Cape in twenty eighteen. That's when I wrote the song. Mm. Um, then finished it. Uh, years later um here in Joburg yeah. um just to 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 fu fully you know make it a, a, a song yeah. and if you listen to the song it's basically a scripture the 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 the, the chorus is based on the scripture Psalms 146 verse 5 mm -hmm. um if mm -hmm. you read the whole chapter it speaks about God and the creation that he he, he has done and and who he is basically yeah yeah and i mean you're saying that the song took about 2 years to you know kind of uh, produce and and and, and and release uh, what, what's your songwriting process it's it's inspired it's by it's inspired by nature one and yes. it's always been like that uh, if not nature I'm on the road um, yes. that's how it's always been <laughs> um, so I, I, I do take it like from an inspirational point of view whenever it comes mm -hmm. I don't sit and say oh now, now, it's, time to write. now it's time to write <laughs> yeah. um, the good thing is I always have my phone so whenever there's like something that comes a melody um, I record it. I start even if it doesn't make sense. I'm yeah. not scared anymore. Yeah. In the beginning, I used to be scared to listen to myself, but now I realize this is the beginning. That's how it really should start. Yeah. Um, as rough as it is, so I'm not scared to just have a tune or have a melody or have words mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. are ringing in my ear, and I just keep repeating them. Sometimes it's like a verse today, and then. Three a months, bridge. it's a bridge. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then, then you get stuck, you know, how do we finish this song? <laughs> yes, yes. And that's where my my musical people come in <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. To, to assist. That's how it is. No, indeed. I mean, and I think I always ask this question because it's so important for us creators not, not to be too hard on ourselves. Yes. You know? and as an example, I, I also never thought I was a songwriter. It just what? seemed it just seemed like <laughs> writing songs is like a, like what what should happen? You know, should you, you like are worse. <laughs> you even love, write love songs? Oh my god! <laughs> but I think you know, as creators, we get to be quite hard on ourselves, and you know, sometimes you you, you get just you know two words and a melody that yeah. is like three seconds, uh, and you keep it for years and years, and you don't know what to do with it, sure. right? And so. Uh, how do you encourage someone that is sitting at home and thinking, you know, what's my gift? Am I a songwriter? Am I a singer? What, you know, and the songs I write don't make any sense. How would you encourage someone like that? Keep, keep, keep doing what God wants you to do and mm. also be, pay attention. Um, I think sometimes we just don't pay attention. We, we want to unleash things that we don't even think they are there and yet they are there. Yeah. Um, same as me. I mean, I, 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 I don't take myself 
too serious when it comes to music and and, and writing mm. um and specifically i'm saying i'm not putting pressure under uh, i'm not putting myself under pressure yeah. in any way so don't put pressure on yourself do it as 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 you wish yeah. do it even if you release a single and then five years that's when you release an album it's okay like yeah. our journey is different and you don't have to be like somebody else so take it like that yeah. for me i am a creative as well but when it comes to other things yes i'm harsh on myself but music, I do understand that this is a gift. This is yeah. a different process altogether because yeah. it's about God for me and I need to allow him to do that. Other things, I know I, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk a bit about, uh, you know, your upbringing and, you know, how you get to uh, to this point in your life where you are really, you know, uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, forging a way into discovering who you are and uh, establishing yourself as a, uh, as a professional musician. I mean, uh, growing up, uh, in Detle Hong, uh, you know, how was that experience like? How was the home like and, you know, uh, values that you were taught? The experience was very harsh and horrible, mm. but I, I came out triumphant out of that situation. Uh, and I'm saying this because, one, I was raised by a single parent, mm. uh, was a domestic worker, mm. and my dad uh, passed away and he was just a security guard. Mm. So growing up in that environment, there's no hope. I mean, nobody even knows about Mandela. I can ask you now. You don't know where Mandela is. Did. No, no. Um, yeah. So <laughs> even most people that are in Katong, they don't know where Mandela is yeah. because it's just this little squatter camp um, right there. But for me, um, I saw having God as an opportunity for me to be out of that environment. Mm -hmm. Hence, I got one again in 20, uh, 2007 uh, while I was doing my grade nine. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, yes, yes. Well, while I was doing my grade nine, yeah. um, I, I, I just saw how people who love God uh, are excelling academically in everything that they do. Mm -hmm. They were just an example, a, a good example for me. I wanted to choose to be part of them. I did that, but the music part of it, I didn't know. Yeah. But it so happened because it was SEO. Um, there's very few of us, so churches to go on so we'll yeah. just randomly sing um i learned songs and then i was part of the choir there uh, and then from there i then moved to varsity to seo then even there i joined the worship team i yeah. continued uh but the professional element i think it just came through last year because i was like i'm fine at church i'm fine singing i don't see myself as a recording artist yeah. i don't think i'm called uh for one at that time yeah uh when it happens it will happen and that's how it happened but the 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 writing part has always been there for me because I used to write poems even at high school. Okay. Um, and then with the music now to then decide to record, it was through the intimate sessions that I would normally host at my house. Yeah. Then my friends were like, let's just release a single because we've been singing, you are writing songs, you share some There's of these material, songs, yeah. there is material, let's just release. But then when we were about to release, I mean to record the, the single, we are like, but there's so many songs, you know, <laughs> yeah. why not have it as an EP? I'm like, okay, guys, yeah. let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> but now I think we are working on an album already. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a struggle, hey, do I do a single? And when yeah. you study, like, but, you know, all, all this work, you know, yes. we, can, we may as well just do four songs. Uh, but we may as well just do a full album. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, and, and I mean, it's, it's, not a, it's not a cheap industry. We spoke about how difficult this industry yes. is in music, and uh, uh, how are you an independent artist? You yes. know, what kind of support and structure do you have in place? I am self independent, yeah. um, and I have seen the hand of God through the friends that I have who've been supportive um, because, like you say, it's a very expensive um, journey, mm. um, but I've seen the hand of God in it as well, where I don't stress and I'm not stressing, and I don't owe anyone, which is really, really good, good for me. Yeah. And I think I prepared myself, um, being who I am, a multimedia specialist who's been in the media space, mm. I know how the music business is. So yeah. for me to have that background, it, it kind of prepared me to say, when I want to do my project, this is the standard that I want to do. Don't want to owe anyone, yeah. I want to do things a certain way, and that's how I've done it. And also, I've, I've not compromised on the quality. Mm, uh, yeah. Instead, I've waited where there were times where things were not going the way I wanted. To tell you the honest truth, to even record the song, we've done it maybe four or five times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, could, I could imagine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those are some of the challenges. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so, um, so as, an, as an independent artist, you know, who is uh, self-funded, um, 
uh, and who needs to essentially own your own brand. You know, I can see you, you've got regalia, you've got it you know, right on, on, on brand, you know, Kenzo of Africa. Um, you know, how did you, uh, you know, get to, I'm not going to be called Sboni Semi, I'm going to be called Kenzo of Africa. Uh, that's a beautiful one. Um, I love branding yeah. and everything around me revolves around Gensu, which is who I am. And mm. I just felt more than Gensu being my surname, it's just a unique name. And if you research the name, it's mostly like in Chinese, uh, they were yeah. having it as a, uh, without the T. Um, yeah. But I felt I, I need to rebrand myself in the music space. Mm. And in the process of that, I was just creating a domain for the intimate sessions. And looking at the domain that was available, there was dot .africa. Yeah. So I was like, Kenzu.africa, and that's how it began. There's, there's no theory, it's not spiritual. It just happened like that with the, with the, with the music part. I just yeah. wanted to be Kenzu. Um, and then when I searched for a domain, there was a dot .africa available, and then I right. just took it. Okay, and it works. I mean, <laughs> but I believe it was just prophetic. It was not, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think your ministry is for the nations. Uh, either way, you spoke about being a media, uh, you know, professional specialist. Well, what else are you doing outside of music? Sure, I'm a consultant. I'm a communications specialist. Mm -hmm. I do multimedia as well. That's mm -hmm. that's my um, my specialty. Yeah. Um, I do consulting in different things, branding, marketing, um, as well as writing, as well as you know anything that's artsy. I've been in the art space in the background mm. um, doing business and operations. So I do also events management. There's literally nothing that I don't do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's fantastic. And, and what, what would you say um, is the importance of, you know, education, uh, even for uh, media, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, professionals, um, as well as musicians, uh, because, you know, there's always that argument about, you know, should I stay in a profession and, uh, you know, pursue Ooh. Uh, you know, music part time, or should I do it? You know, how how would you uh, describe yourself in, in that regard? Mu uh, education enlightens you, and if you allow it and acknowledge it, then you'll see the opportunities that it presents to you. Mm -hmm. I do believe that a young person like me, who's from Mandela, to even be able to speak English is an opportunity that was yeah. given to me through education. Mm -hmm. I I also had to do something, some personal development. I remember when I was doing. At live TV presenting for for years, yeah. uh, I struggled a lot. Like for the first year, because I was not used to speaking English like for an hour. Um, <laughs> I was not. The that, that yeah, you know, <laughs> you know. So, but I had to learn. I had to equip myself, um, listen to other people, engage, and read. Yeah. Um, I think what makes you different is being able to search for things, but not limit yourself. Um, mm. Find yourself find the things that you love, yeah. and then grow in them. Teach yourself certain things, they are not in the book, they are not at school. Yeah. And I do believe that school should be everywhere we go. It, at church, at, uh, at home, yeah. there should be school. And that's what education is all about. It's not about us sitting behind the desk. Mm -hmm. And that's why even in my educational space, because I'm in the media space, but specifically education, um, we always encourage people to just find more information, find more resources, even if it's a topic that you struggle with, find different ways and different people that interpret the topic and yeah. uh, explain it. Yeah. And, and for, a, for a young person who is uh, listening to you coming from a squatter camp, a settlement uh, similar to Mandela, where you're from, um, and who's thinking, you know, I don't know if the challenges I'm experiencing now as a young person, you know, are, are even, uh, I'm able to overcome. I mean, you struggled with unemployment for a long time, you know, uh, coming from a poor background and all of that, and now you are, you know, starting to see progress in your life. How, what would you say to encourage as uh, someone who is maybe in similar circumstances that you were in and wondering whether or not there, would, there is a way out. Find your purpose. It's not always easy. Mm. Find your purpose and in the, in, the, in the midst of that, don't be afraid to fail. Yeah. Don't be afraid to try something. Um, try different things, even if they fail. The reason why most of us are comfortable in our situations is it's because it's all we know. Yeah. And if, if all is what you know uh, and you're not willing to, to learn more, then um, you're not going to grow. You're mm -hmm. not going to find out what's out there. So um, it's easy for us to also say we are waiting for people. We are waiting for God to give us certain things. Yeah. But I do believe that with the hands that we have, the mouth, the feet, everything that you have, 
you can use it for yourself mm -hmm. and grow yourself and find yourself. I think the very first thing is to, to find yourself. And there's no better place of finding yourself than in God. I yeah. do believe that for me to find God was for me to find me because mm. he created me. So sometimes when all else fails, find the one that has created you because he knows you better than your friends, your family and everybody else. Sure. sure. You, you spoke about something quite important, uh, finding yourself. And uh, I mean, as, a, as an artist, especially in gospel, we, we, see new, we see new people, new talent all the time. I yes. mean, if I, <laughs> how many people you know, reach out to get an interview, <laughs> you'd be surprised. <laughs> So finding yourself and uh, being comfortable, being uniquely you. Um, what would you say about that? Because the, the industry is so uh, it's so it's so congested. There's yes. so much uh, so much music, so much new talent, and so how do you find your, your own voice uh, amidst all of that? You find it through searching for it on your own. Mm. Um, we sometimes want to use other people to find ourselves and so I'm saying it's important to find it on your own spend time on yourself and for me to discover myself and my sound it was through me writing so for you it might be different it might be through you singing at church mm. uh, but I think what you then find in authenticity is the fact that when you listen to yourself the most and fall in love with yourself then you get to then understand yourself then when you spend more time yeah. um, studying other people or listening more to other people i'm not saying it's wrong but i do believe that you also need to spend time because sometimes if it is a broadcaster sometimes you don't like the sound of your voice yeah. <laughs> but unfortunately you need to listen to yourself and fall yeah. in love with yeah. yourself because that's when you're going to know really how do you sound but sometimes we need to also acknowledge where we are not strong yeah. and ask for help there are people that can help you with uh, vocal training, vocal discovery, all these things. Mm. Information is out there. So right. I don't think if you want to take this serious, you should just sit yeah. and be comfortable, um, do something about it. Absolutely agree with you. And what have you learned about relationships and collaboration in, in, in this industry? I mean, that it's very competitive. <laughs> it is. I've learned that they are never permanent if God doesn't want them to be Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put God in it because I do believe that everything that we do is so spiritual in a, in a way that I may love you as my friend but not support you in your music true, true. and it's okay. So we yeah. need to then accept that there's people that will love our music, there's people that will love us individually for what we contribute mm -hmm. in their lives or the friendships that we have with their lives. But I do believe above it all that God causes all things to work together for us. So be it from a friendship, be it from a relationship or work business, you need to then find alignment in God and say, where am I and who am I supposed to work with and right, how right. am I supposed to do things? Right, right. Absolutely. I agree with you. And so uh, as we wrap up our conversation uh, this morning, uh, what is, uh, what's, what's next for you? It's the dropping of this EP. Okay. Uh, it's about five songs. Um, oh, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, it gives me goosebumps. Yeah. For the fact that I also listen to songs that I wrote myself and also hear how people love and appreciate. Uh, I really had a, a great time yesterday where I had close friends and family to celebrate my birthday and also giving them a taste of the EP so they had an exclusive yeah. um, well, taste. Oh, they had an exclusive session. <laughs> they had an exclusive. But we were not invited so, to it. So the reception was great. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm even more ready for, for, for the EP. Yeah. But also I'm looking forward to writing more music and then record a, a, an album when the time is right, and maybe mm. in the next three years. I don't know what God has in store. But listen, I'm here. I'm on the journey and I'm taking it as it, as it comes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what are the productions we worked on, if there are any? In terms of music? Yeah. yeah. Or other artists that you've uh, collaborated and worked with? I've worked with uh, Craft of Worship in 2018. We recorded um, mm. Ultimate Worship okay. at Sorcha Theatre and I did a song there called The Visitation From You. Ah. Um, that's a group I work, uh, worked with to, to record. That was my first recording. Yeah. Um, and then now my, my album. And then other artists I'll just work with from a church point of view. Yeah. yeah. And uh, where do people find you? Everywhere. <laughs> Gentsu.Africa. G-E-N-T-S-U. Dot Africa. Africa on you can visit my website as well. Like I said, I have intimate sessions where I host friends. It's a fellowship session. Mm -hmm. It's more like a home cell, but I'm inviting friends like um, um, yeah who are professionals in different spaces yeah. to talk about how God is working in their lives from business uh, families to whatever that they do. So do visit my website. It's Gensu Africa, and you can even book me through the website or my email bookings at Gensu Africa. Fantastic.
Thank, Thank you so much for coming through. It was a great pleasure having you and uh, listening to your story and also your musical journey. Uh, so we wish you all the best uh, with your EP as well. Uh, hopefully you'll invite us again when you launch. Absolutely. Uh, and we'll and have you back here. Yeah, we'll have you back here as well to talk about that. <laughs> and we have a listen to your new material. Thank, Thank you. you very much indeed. Uh, that's uh, again sort of Africa there. Uh, Smoggy Sane, for those of you who know him, uh, you know, as uh, Smoggy Sane. But uh, having a beautiful EP uh, that's coming out as well as...